gonna be my best one yet. That's moving forward already. Just got a big boost. Promise me that he won't be walking into something dangerous. How dare you throw my daughter's murder in my face. By all means, son, you lecture me on proper wedding etiquette. General Hospital latest update, Sunny's new love interest revealed. Plus, Ava's jealousy boils over, and Anna confronts Carly's dangerous move. Will Jason's secret be exposed? Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, I hope everyone is having a wonderful day, after watching these videos, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. General Hospital Prediction, Sunny's bond with Natalia intensifies. General Hospital predictions suspect that Sunny Corintho's bonds with newcomer Natalia Rogers Ramirez, and they may become a hot new couple on the ABC Sudser. Sunny Corinthos makes an impression on Natalia Rogers Ramirez, General Hospital. Recently, on General Hospital, Natalia Rogers Ramirez came onto the scene as the mother of singing sensation, Allison, Blaze Rogers Ramirez. Unfortunately, Natalia had an awful reaction to Ali's new relationship with Sonny Corinthos' daughter, Christina Corinthos. So, she went into Charlie's pub one day to try to make things right with Chrissy, and that's when she met Sonny. Right off the bat, the mob boss seemed to make a good impression on Natalia. She opened up to him and valued his opinion. Indeed, he gave her good advice on how to handle her relationship with Ali. Since then, they have bumped into each other several times on General Hospital. And appear to be getting much closer. Sunny getting closer to Natalia on General Hospital. Currently, on General Hospital, Natalia Rogers Ramirez, Eva LaRue, and Sunny Corinthos, Maurice Bernard, are getting closer by the day. No doubt, he's been extremely helpful when it comes to her daughter, Allison, Blaze, Rogers Ramirez, Jacqueline Grace Lopez. And he's helping her come to terms with Ali's relationship with Christina Corinthos, Kate Monsi. Indeed, their paths have been crossing a lot lately. They had a drink together at the Metro Court Bar. Then, they ran into one another at the park, and Sonny invited her back to his place for a drink. And most recently, he invited her to join him for breakfast at the MC restaurant. No doubt, there is quite a flirty vibe between the two of them. And Natalia seemed pleased when Sonny assured her there is nothing between him and Ava Jerome, Mora West. Of course, Ava is not happy with how close Sonny is getting to Blaze's mom on General Hospital. Indeed, she wants to keep her hooks in him. However, whatever bond Ava was developing with Sonny seems to be over almost as fast as it started. He recently threw her past mistakes in her face. He even brought up the tragic murder of her daughter, Kiki Jerome, Haley Aaron. So, it seems that any romantic possibility for them is out the window now. And that may open the door for Sonny to pursue something more with Natalia. General Hospital Predictions New Romance Ahead for the Kingpin? Coming up, on General Hospital, Sonny gets even closer with Natalia. She's determined to attend Brooklyn Cordemain's Amanda Seton, wedding to keep an eye on Ali and Christina. And Sonny just made it clear that Ava will not be attending the wedding with him. So, he still needs a date for it. Soon, he has a proposition for Natalia. So, indeed, it looks like he invites her to be his plus one at the Achalan wedding. And the wedding might be where they spark. Sonny's divorce from Nina Reeves, Cynthia Watt-Rose, should be finalized soon. Then, he may begin a new romance with Natalia on General Hospital. No doubt, it appears that's the direction they're going. If so, Sonny's bipolar spiral will either bring them closer or tear them apart. Changes are happening all over General Hospital. Tune in every day to see if Natalia Rogers Ramirez becomes Sonny Corinthos new love on the ABC soap opera. Today's next update, Dante and Sam decide to help Jason without his knowing, and Anna and Jason learn of Carly's Pennonville trip. Today on General Hospital, Natalia scores an invite to Brooklyn and Chase's wedding, which upsets Ava, and Dex and Joss have a pleasant conversation. At the Metro Court, Natalia joins Sunny, believing nobody should have to dine alone. She assumes someone had the audacity to stand him up, but he tells her that Ava was here and got tiffed by something he said and stormed off. Natalia hopes things will calm down at home. Sunny explains why Ava and Avery moved in, but it's not working anymore. Natalia knows how difficult relationships can be when children are involved. She says she and Allison's father are separated, 
and she has a son from a previous relationship. She hopes things calm down for him. He says Ava could be packing as they speak, so maybe if they take their time here, it will give her time to be gone by the time he returns. She suggests he talk to Ava, but he says it was a stupid argument over a wedding. She wanted to attend with him, but he said she couldn't because of the bride's family, and she stormed off. Natalia empathizes with her as it's a terrible feeling to be excluded. He doubts anyone would exclude her. Natalia says Allison is going to Brooklyn's wedding with Christina, and she's missing out. Sonny says that was the wedding he spoke of that Ava wanted to attend. Sonny has a plus one and offers to take her. Natalia asks if he's sure, and he is. Natalia accepts with pleasure. Natalia says she's got to get a dress, shoes, and make a hair appointment, so she needs to scoot. She thanks him for the meal and says she's looking forward to tomorrow. Natalia heads out. Ava goes to the pharmacist in charge of dispensing Sunny's pills and has some questions about the medication. She claims she and her husband are taking a long trip and thinks they need to stock up. The pharmacist says he has four refills left and asks if he can help her with anything else. Ava says her husband just recently started this new drug and asks if it is safe. He explains that it was only recently approved but is effective and safe. Ava asks, hypothetically, what would happen if a patient took a lesser dosage? She asks if her husband skips his meds sometimes, could his behavior change? Could he become aggressive and violent? He says it's possible, but he's just a pharmacist, not a physician. All he can say is it's important to take the medication regularly, and people with bipolar disorder don't become axe murderers overnight. He notes if she's noticed changes, and if so, she should speak to him and his doctor. Ava says it's not necessary, she just had questions about this new drug. She thanks him and heads out. Sunny returns home and seems out of breath and agitated before going in. Ava is home, and he's surprised she's still here after she stormed off on him. Ava apologizes for making a big deal over a social event and understands why she wouldn't be wanted there. Ava says she appreciates how they've connected and come to trust one another, and she cares about this relationship. She says that's why, for Avery's sake, it's time for her to move out. He asks if this is about earlier. Ava says yes and no. She says she values this friendship and doesn't want to put Avery in the position to ever see them fighting. She also feels she's overstayed her welcome. Sunny says he's never said that, and he likes having Avery here. She asks, what about me? Sunny says he likes her company, and he didn't ask her to leave. He says if she wants a place of her own, he'll help her get one, but he likes how things are. She thanks him, and both she and Avery want to stay. She has realized she's been a recluse lately, she doesn't get out except for the gallery, which is why she made an assumption about Brooklyn's wedding. He says she should get out more then. Ava asks if she can help him get ready for the wedding, maybe get a painting for a gift. He says cash is king but thanks her. She offers to drive him, but he says he's good and he's taking Natalia. He says Blaze and Christina are going, so he thought it would be nice to include Blaze's mother. Ava says that is very generous. He walks away, and her smile fades, and she gnashes her teeth. In her office, Anna looks over her records on Jack. Dex shows up in his blues, and Anna just wanted to check in with him and how things are going. He thanks her for this opportunity, and he believes this is where he is supposed to be. He also notes Chase has gone out of his way to take him under his wing, and he smooths things over with the other officers. Dex says Chase even invited him to his wedding, and Anna says she'll see him there. Anna then asks if he's had any interaction with Dante. He says he and Dante don't intermingle, and he's Sonny's son, so he doesn't want people to think that he and Dante are working together for Sonny. Anna asks if he feels Dante might work on his father's behalf. Dex doesn't believe Dante would protect Sonny, at least not consciously. Dex notes that he has seen Sonny and Dante interact, and they trust each other but he doesn't think Dante would look the other way if Sonny committed a crime. However, maybe when Dante looks at Sonny, he only sees what he wants to. Anna thanks him for his thoughts and dismisses him. Sam and Dante meet in the park, and Sam explains she finally got answers about Jason, who has been working as an undercover FBI informant for the past two years. Dante wonders what he's doing now. 
Sam doesn't know exactly, but Jason is working with Kate's. Dante is shocked, but then recalls Sonny telling him that Jason was an FBI informant. He says it was right when he was waking up in the hospital, and not only did Sonny tell him, but Jason confirmed it. He forgot about it, likely because of all the meds he was on. Sam thinks this is why Sonny turned his back on Jason. Dante confirms Sonny would see working for the FBI as a betrayal. Dante says he and Kate's didn't get off to a good start, with Kate's accusing him of protecting his father. However, this is bigger than his father, the crime bosses that were taken out were big deals, and what he's found is they weren't mob hits. He says their organizations didn't collapse, and the next in line took over, so what were the executions for if not to cause chaos? Sam believes Jason was honest that he's been coerced to take this job and stay away. She wants them to help him to make sure Danny doesn't lose his father again. She hopes he understands. He does, and he's not threatened by any of this. Dante feels he owes Jason too, he just doesn't know how to help him. Sam says they'll figure it out, and they need to find out what the FBI has on Jason. Dante feels she should stay out of this, as there is nothing she can do, but she won't accept that. Dex heads to the park to exercise and runs into Joss, who is also jogging. She challenges him to a race, takes off, and he follows. They finish, and Joss thanks him for respecting her enough not to let her beat him. She asks him about the academy, and he says it's going well. He says it turns out that if you stick with things and don't walk away, things get better. Dex asks about school, and she says she's wrapping things up for the semester and has a lifeguarding job at the Metro Court this summer. She is also switching her major to environmental science. He has no doubt she'll save the planet if she sets her mind to it. She thanks him and thinks she should get going. They both tell one another it was good to see the other. She jogs off, and Dex smiles. At the warehouse, Kate's confronts Jason about Carly visiting Brennan and Pennantville, and asks what did he tell her. Jason says this is the first time he's heard of this, and he doesn't know why she was there. Kate says if he told her anything that violates their agreement. Jason yells at him that he's doing this to protect Carly, so why would he give her information that puts her at risk? Kate admits it doesn't make sense, and he knows Jack was arrested at Bobby's and Carly was there. He feels Jack came to Port Charles in part to cultivate Sonny's ex-wife so he has some use for her. Or, less likely, he says Jack may be of use to Carly. He orders Jason to figure it out and then leaves. Jason calls up Anna, and she soon arrives. Jason tells her Kate's informed him that Carly visited Brennan in Pentonville, which shocks Anna. She says this is concerning because when she and Dante arrested Brennan, it appeared as if he was going to kidnap Carly. Anna wonders why she'd go see him now. Jason assumes Carly thinks she's helping him. He tells her about Kate's coming to see him while Carly was here, and he guesses Carly eavesdropped and heard Kate's talking about Brennan being arrested with another pikeman guy. She says that was Hume, and if Carly tells Brennan the FBI is investigating him and Pikeman, then she made their job that much harder. Anna says, in all probability, Brennan knows the FBI is on his trail, and that's a problem. Jason asks if she's afraid of this guy. Anna says he's a smooth charmer, but he is also very smart and very shrewd. As trainees, they all learned that giving Brennan any information was the most dangerous weapon you could hand him. She says Brennan will find his target, act, and the FBI won't know what hit them. Anna says they need to find out what Carly told Brennan. Jason says Kate's said the same thing, but he can't be the one to do it. He says if he questions her, then Carly will know what's up and will want to help even more. They have to find a way to stop Carly from helping him. Anna says she'll talk to Carly. Thanks for watching this videos, please hit the subscribe button for more updated news.